Hello, this is a video on electric fields and electric forces. I've been going through Young and Friedman's University Physics for 10 years now. We're about 700 pages in, but we've finally made it to the section on electromagnetism. And chapter 21 is on electric uh, uh, charges and electric uh, fields. And so here we are in section four, electric fields and electric forces. So what is an electric field? Don't overthink this. It's really not too hard of an idea. It's the idea, you know, for example, let's say we had this ball that was electrically charged and we would basically imagine that there's a field going out from that, that charge that is creating a field and, and you might not feel it because your skin doesn't necessarily react to an electric field. But let's say that you had a little test, what we're calling a test charge. I'm going to see if there's an electric field in this room, you know, and you turn on this little test charge and it reacts. It reacts to the fact that there's an electric field emanating from this source in the room. And so we call it a test charge because we're going to use it. Uh, we don't want it to be very charged, but just a little bit of charge. Uh, and it tells us, ding, 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 there is an electric field in this room. But the basic concept isn't hard. You've got a charge that's creating a force. It's a little bit like, you know, we might imagine the Earth to be emanating a gravitational field. This is just a picture, but, you know, let's say there's no gravitational field around the Earth and I'm, I'm kind of floating up there at, you know, 5,000 feet or whatever, and I'm just having a good old time. It's Ken, here I am. And then all of a sudden someone turns on the Earth's gravity and, ah, you know, I fall to my death. Um, so, um, if you think of a gravitational field as basically, Ken is a test Ken, you know, ah, yes, there is gravity here, ah, anyway, but um, so it's almost like there's a gravitational field emerging, you know, from the earth um, and all around it, you know, you get sucked into this gravitational field. We might talk about a magnetic field in a similar way. You know, again, I don't necessarily experience magnetism, but let's say there's a very strong magnet somewhere near me, and I happen to have a little piece of, of iron, you know, or metal, and oh, it's going to, you know, it says, yes, there is a magnetic field here. And so in a similar way, we can imagine that, that there could be a source that's generating an electric field in a room, but you don't know it until you turn on my little, you know, test charge to see whether or not there is, in fact, a charge there. We call this sort of thing, these sort of fields, action at a distance, uh, because something I'm doing here is affecting something over there. Okay, so let's get some definitions on the, on the plate here. So the electric force on a charged body, might say my test charge, is, is basically the force exerted by an electric field created by other Charles charged bodies. The, the electric field on an individual body doesn't affect itself in the same way that I can't say, well, look at me, I'm going to pull myself up in the air. Well, you can't pull yourself up in the air. And so an electric charge can affect other bodies, but it doesn't affect itself. Um, and so the electric force on a charged body is exerted by an electric field created by other charged bodies. Okay. Now the electric force at that point where you have your test charge, the electric force at that point is the force experienced by that test charge at that point that point. Um, and we would say that the electric field that is affecting it is the force per unit charge. So if the test charge has a certain charge, um, the electric field is the force per charge. Or the first, so the first thing you need to know is what, what an electric field is. But the second thing I want you to know is that this equation from this, from this section, that the electric field equals the force per charge at a particular point, okay? What are these arrows? Well, you might remember from, I have a video on ve vectors. These arrows basically say that this is a vector, <clears throat> which means that it has a magnitude and a direction. I mean, after all, what does an arrow signify but a direction, right? So the electric field goes in a particular direction and the force goes in a particular direction. If we think of the, the source of the electric field as being positive, then the direction is going to be outward um, emanating in every direction. If the, the source is negative, then we might think of the, the force is pulling, pulling in. But let's assume that the force is, is positive for, uh, for, for the sake of our, our, our section here. Okay, so we need to know this. Now I might say technically, um, we want the charge to be as small as possible, uh, the test charge that is, because if it gets too big, then it's gonna start 
messing with the electric field. It's, it's going to have its own electric field that messes with the electric field from, from this one. And instead of us measuring this one, we now have to mess with the complication of two fields. But so technically, we might precisely say that the electric field at a point is the limit as the amount of test charge approaches zero of the force at that point divided by that test charge amount. Okay, but for the time being, we're going to stick with this general equation right here. The field equals the force at the at a charge. Now we can multiply both sides by Q zero, and what do we get? We get that force equals field times uh, test charge. So this is uh, the third thing I want you to know from this video. One, what a field is. Two, this equation, and three, this rearranged equation. Um, and so again, assuming that the source is positive, then if the test charge is positive, the force is going to like charges repel. And so the force is going to go in the same direction as the, the field. Um, however, if the test charge is negative, uh, then it's going to opposites attract and it's going to pull toward uh, the, the source of the, of the field. Okay, again, this equation is a little bit analogous to the equation for gravitation. Um, F equals ma, right? So the force of gravity equals mass times the acceleration due to gravity. Somewhat parallel here because the mass it is relates to the gravitational field and electric field relates to an electric field. So there's a little bit of analogy but again between electromagnetism and, and gravity there. Okay, so there's two section subsections in this in this section we're doing this video on. The second part is um, the electric field of the point charge. Okay, so now let's get some more definitions on, on the plate here. So let's call the, the place where the field is coming from. Uh, let's call that the source point. And then let's call the point where we're de determining if there's a field. We'll call that the field point, not, not too hard. Source, field, right. So we might say that there is a displacement vector between them. It's gonna be a straight line. It's not like the movies where you have these two electric balls and you got zzz, and it's going all over the place. This is gonna be a straight, a straight displacement from the source to the field, okay? And R with the R vector is basically that displacement vector. Uh, it has a narrow over it because it has a direction, and of course, it has a magnitude. Now, it is useful. I know you might think, why in the world is that useful? But it is useful to also define something we might call a unit vector. A unit vector has, has, has um, a magnitude of one, okay? So all it basically does is say, this direction. Um, it's kind of like Mad-Eye Moody in Goblet of Fire for Harry Potter fans, you know, where he basically says, go that way. Um, the, the unit vector basically says, this is the way, go this way. Um, and so the unit vector basically is, if you take the, the displacement vector and you divide it by its magnitude, well, something divided by something is one, um, and all you're left with is one pointing in that direction. And so we've got this little hat or carrot on the top that basically says this is a unit unit vector. That will be useful in one of the examples uh, in, in this section. And then it will also be useful in, I think, some of the exercises of this section. Okay, let's work on getting a equation for uh, the electric field. We're gonna start with Coulomb's law, which is in the previous video. Um, so F at zero equals one over four pi epsilon zero. Uh, this is basically K. Um, it's nine times 10 to the ninth, and I forget exactly what the units are. Um, I think it's like Newtons per Coulomb or something like that. But anyway, that's not important right now. Well, it is, but I don't know. I don't remember what it is. And I'm not gonna go look it up. You can look it up yourself. But anyway, so the force equals K times the absolute value of the source charge times the test charge divided by R, the distance between them, squared. Okay, so there's a little bit of Coulomb's law refresher. Now, what happens if I divide both sides by Q0? Well, F over Q0 is E, right? So, and then the Q0 factors out. And so I'm left with this kind of equation for the field. But I don't want just the, uh, this is just a magnitude equation. I want the vector equation. And so I introduce that unit vector we just talked about. And, and if I basically say, if I take this magnitude and I point it in that direction, then it becomes the vector of the, um, of the electric field. Okay, again, um, it points away from the source uh, if it's positive in the same direction as the force, as the field is going. 
but if if it's negative then it's going if the if the uh the charge is negative it's going to be going this direction um okay but this is uh, these are this line is basically what i said earlier okay um if the if the source charge is positive it's going to be pointing out if the source charge is negative it's going to be pointing uh pointing in all right vector fields so there's going to be a lot of vector fields in the rest of this book and uh, an electric field the thing is a an electric field can vary from point to point in fact its magnitude changes uh, depending on how far away uh, your test charge is from from the source so that can get a little complicated um, there are things that we call uniform fields uh, for example in a wi copper wire uh, which is a conductor then you're going to have the same values for the field everywhere and you get current running you know sometimes through it um, there is something called electrostatics. Static has a sense of not moving, right? And so in electrostatics, there's no net motion and, and therefore the electric field is zero everywhere in the conductor. By the way, sometimes you have um, a hollowed out part in the middle of the conductor and the field may not be zero in there, but in terms of in the conductor himself, in a conductor itself, uh, if it's electrostatic, then there is zero, a zero electric field uh, inside of it. Okay, well, uh, we're now done with the important part. So if you're tired of me, turn this video off. But there was the, the final illustration, the final example I thought was kind of interesting because it ended up with an equation uh, for the, for the uh, trajectory of an electron uh, uh, between two charged plates. And you may be thinking, who cares? But I mean, this is how they used to make TVs work, right? Because you would shoot electrons and you would use the the charges on the plate to guide the electron, you know, basically shooting an electron, electron gun at this um, uh, screen that um, because it was organized, you know, you would see Johnny Carson, you know, or whatever on, on that, that CRT screen, um, I think, uh, if my memory serves. So anyway, just for fun, this is example 21.8. Now the electron of electro the acceleration of electron is going to be f over m. Why? Because f equals m a, right? So a equals f divided by uh, m. This is old stuff. Now the electromagnetic magnetic force is going to be negative e times the electric field amount. Negative e is the the charge on an electron, and electrons we say have a, a negative charge. Why does this work? Uh, because we have said that f equals uh, Q times E, right? We said that. Uh, and so uh, this is Q, the charge is the negative amount of electron charge uh, times the electric field. Okay, now some things from uh, good old mechanics. Uh, X equals uh, VT on the horizontal and Y equals one half AT squared. Okay, now we've got all of everything we need. So let's go ahead and plug some stuff in. So Y, which is if you've got two plates, two charged plates, we call that a capacitor, by the way. Uh, we'll be getting into capacitors in a few chapters, if I live. Um, but we have these two, two plates, charged plates. Uh, and so um, the, 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 the electric field is, is, is uh, actually, I think the electric field is going like this if the bottom plate is positive as it is in the uh, example. So uh, Y equals one half, a, well, we just said that A was F over M, and we said that F was this. So this, negative EE -E over M, negative EE -E over M, all I've done right there is I've substituted for A, T squared. Right, okay, so we're halfway there. Now we can say that T equals X over V, substitute that in, and we end up with this equation for the trajectory of an electron uh, in between two charged plates. Um, uh, it equals one half uh, this, uh, but we've, uh, again, t squared, t squared is going to be x squared over v squared. So there's the x squared and there's the v squared. So this is an equation that you want to tuck, tuck around for a rainy day when you're doing uh, advanced physics. Okay, well, this video has been kind of long. I feel kind of bad about it, but then again, you know, it's free. You can turn it off whenever you want. Have a great day. We'll be back with more videos of electromagnetism.